Hi students, welcome to EPG Padishala, an e-content project under National Mission on Education through ICT. I am Mini Ulnat, working as Systems Manager in Cochin University of Science and Technology. Today, I am going to introduce you to the module Operating System, its functions and features coming under the paper ICT for Libraries. An operating system is a program that manages the computer hardware and software. It acts as an intermediary between a user of the computer and the computer hardware. The purpose of the operating system is to provide an environment in which a user can execute programs in a convenient and efficient manner. Operating system can be said as a collection of software that manages computer hardware resources, providing common services for computer programs. It is a vital component of the system software in any system. Operating system ensures the correct operation of the system to prevent user programs from interfering with the proper operation of the system. The hardware must provide appropriate mechanism. A computer system can be divided roughly into four components, the hardware, the operating system, the application programs and the users. Let us see one by one. Hardware contains the central processing unit the memory, the input-output devices which provide the basic computing resources. Coming to the application programs, it contains all the common applications like word processors, spreadsheets, compilers, web browsers, which define the ways in which these resources are used to solve the computing problems of the users. The operating system controls and coordinates the use of the hardware among the various application programs for various users. In short, it can be said that operating system act as an interface between the hardware and the user. It is a collection of program utilities that handle the technical details without the user intervention. We can view an operating system as a resource allocator. Computer system has many resources hardware, software that may be required to solve a problem. You need CPU time, memory space, file storage space, IO devices and so on. OS acts as the manager of these resources, facing numerous and possibly conflicting requ requests for resources. The operating system decides how to allocate them to the specific programs and users so that it can operate the computer system efficiently and fairly. A different view of the operating system emphasizes the need to control the various input and output devices as well as user programs. So an operating system you can say is a control program which manages the execution of user programs to prevent errors and improper use of the system, specifically concerned with the operation and control of the IO devices. So we can again say that operating system is responsible for the management and coordination of all the activities as well as sharing the resources of computers. It acts as a host for computing applications running on a machine. It determines which application should run in what order and how much time should be allotted for each application before giving another application a turn. This is specifically in the case of a multi-tasking operating system. So an operating system handles input and output process, sends messages to each applications or interactive users about the status of the operation errors. It can offload the management of what they are called as batch jobs so that the initiating application is freed from the work that like a print spool and manage how to divide the program in the case of a parallel processing. The popular operating systems which we are very familiar with included can be categorized into three embedded operating system which are used in the handheld computers, they are stored within the device in maybe in the read-only memory just like your Windows CE or Palm operating system. Another category which we are very familiar with is a network operating system which controls and coordinates linked computers, that is a network basically. The, the, the first one was the novel network which we are familiar with, soon a lot of uh, other operating system was also uh, came into this network field and Windows 2008 is a typical example. Unix are always, Unix had a, was you always used as a network operating system. Now coming to the standalone desktop or personal computer operating system, I'm sure all of you must be familiar with, it controls a single desktop or a laptop computer and is basically a client operating system 
They started off with the Microsoft Disk Operating System, soon gave way to Microsoft Windows series. We have Mac Operating System as well as Linux in this category. Now coming into the details of uh, operating functions, the functions can be mainly categorized into memory management, processor management, device management, file management, the four man main management software management properties. Apart from that, we have security, control over system performance, job accounting, error detecting aids, and coordination between other softwares and users. We'll see this one by one, starting with the memory management. Memory management refers to the management of primary memory or the main memory. Operating this system does the following activities for the memory management. It mainly keeps track of the primary memory, that is which part of it are in use by whom, what part of are not in use, etc. In a multi-programming operating system, decides which process will get more memory when and how much. It allocates the memory when the process requires it for to do so, as well as deallocates when the process no longer needs it or has been terminated. Coming to the processor management, in a multi-programming environment, operating system decides which process gets the processor when and how much time. This function is called the process scheduling. Operating system keeps track of processor and status of process. Program responsible for this task is known as traffic controller. It allocates the processor, that is a CPU, to a process as well as deallocates the processor when the process is no longer required. Coming to the third function, device management. Operating system manages device communication via their respective drivers. Operating system keeps track of all devices. Program responsible for this task is known as I.O. controller. This decides which processor gets the device when and for how long. It allocates the device in a very efficient way as well as deallocate the devices. For example, synchronizing print job in a multi-user environment. I'm sure that you are be familiar with that. Now, coming to the fourth uh, function that is the file management. A file system is normally organized into directories for easy navigations and usage. These directories may contain files and other directions. Operating system keeps track of the information, location, usage, status, everything. The collective facilities are often known as file system. It decides who gets the resources, allocates the resources, as well as deallocates the resources. Apart from the four management functions we have already talked, some more important activities this operating system does include security, I'm sure that you must be knowing how operating system provides the security by means of passwords and similar other technique, preventing unauthorized access to programs and data. Then coming to the control over the system performance, it records the delays between the request for a service and response from the system. It keeps track of time and resources used by various jobs and users for job accounting. Now, for error detecting aids, it uses the production of dumps, traces, error messages, and other de debugging and error detecting aids. Coordination between the other softwares and users uh, uh, includes coordination and assignment of compilers, interpreters, assemblers, and other software to the various users of the computer system. Having said so about the functions and features of the operating system, let us concentrate on more popular desktop operating system like Microsoft DOS, Windows, and Linux. Microsoft DOS was, I can tell you, was one of the revolutionary point of uh, introducing computers to the desktop level. The, the problem with the Microsoft DOS was that it uses a command line interface and the screen prompts the user to type in the commands. You need to remember the commands and that is not a very user friendly. Some of the examples of the DOS commands are given in the slide. The most revolutionary point in the operating system or which made the computer as such popular among the people was Windows. Windows is a series of operating system created by Microsoft that governs all the operations on your computer and which made actually the desktop computing much more similar with the gra graphical user interface. Microsoft first introduced an operating system named Windows in November 20th, 
1985 as an add on to the Microsoft DOS in response to the growing interest in graphical user interfaces GUI Microsoft Windows came to dominate the world's personal computing market overtaking the Mac OS which was more popular till then which was introduced in 1984 Windows approximately has got 90% of the market share of the client operating system for usage on the internet the most recent client version of Windows is Windows 10 we'll see how to use a computer is important with several features of windows operating system we'll start with a desktop and taskbar desktop and taskbar always appear on the screen when you start a windows operating system desktop and taskbar serve as a main gui that is a graphical interface to your computer together with these two cover the entire computer screen and you can access all your programs and files from either desktop or taskbar Let us begin our study of Windows with some definitions, and these definitions apply to all the systems, so that it's worthwhile to understand. As already indicated, operating system is a software that controls activities of the computer. Behind the scene, it accepts input from devices such as keyboard, mouse, and directs output to the monitor and speakers. It keeps track of your files and folders on your storage device. like your disk drives flash drives etc it provides security for your computer system it communicates with other software applications and enables them to work together the desktop is a screen that displays once you have turned on your computer responding to the prompt for your username and password this is your workspace it's where you manage your task on the computer Your software opens on the desktop, and you manipulate your files and folders on your desktop. The taskbar provides you with access to the software applications, enables you to move between the applications, and gives you access to the system resources. It's a horizontal bar that appears at the bottom of the screen. We can say that window is a space on the desktop representing a program, system resource, or data. multiple windows can be opened at one time working independently as well as together that is the beauty of windows for instance if you write a report on the latest sales for your company you will open a spreadsheet copy the net profit directly from the spreadsheet into the report document and so on windows can move around the desktop minimize to take up less space and maximize to fill the desktop icons i'm sure you must be familiar with this it is a small picture that represents the program file folders and other things on the desktop objects with the same characters like like your file folders will have the same icon software icons are very unique and so that you can quickly find the software applications don't worry if the desktop you see in your office or at school is different than the one you have at home it has got a unique configuration of the installed programs and files and windows enables you to create a desktop environment with your which we are comfortable by adding or removing the icons that fit your need a window can be divided as a program window and a document window a computer program is a set of instruction that performs a specific task for example we'll take a word processing application or a data management application each time you open a program windows opens a program window through which you enter the commands for the program the more number of programs you start more number of windows you are opening as a result you may have several program windows open on your desktop at the same time a program window might contain several document windows also what is a document window a document is any information you create with a program such as letter spreadsheet or a database file So when you open or create a document in a program you open a document window this type of window is sometimes referred to also as a child window we'll see what menus and menu commands are menu contains a list of available commands in a program rather than memorizing all the commands in a program windows organize the commands into menus most window programs will have at least a file menu and a help menu for sure now Another thing you have to be you have to keep in mind is that you should always exit windows before you turn off your computer. Windows must save the information to the hard drive as it closes. You may lose important information if you just switch off your power before window closes completely. Now coming to the later versions of Windows 7, 8, 9, 
and 10. Windows 7 is an operating system that Microsoft produced for basically for personal computers. It's a follow up of the Microsoft Vista operating system, which was early released in 2006. It's again an operating system which allows the computer to manage software and perform your essential task with the GUI that allows you to visually interact with your computer's functions in a logical, fun and easy way. For example, in Windows 7, you can view two windows side by side by using AeroSnap feature. This feature automatically sizes up or snaps two windows to fit together on the screen, allowing you the convenience of viewing them next to each other, AeroSnap. Aero is an interface that makes your visual interactions with the desktop fun and easy. The taskbar is now more convenient to use with larger views and easier access. As soon as you start typing on your search bar of the start button, you will instantly see a list of relevant options grouped by categories with highlighted keywords and tests. This allows you to easily scan for the documents, music, pictures, emails or anything that you are looking for. Libraries allow you to organize your files in one place so that it is easy for you to search and access. So Windows 7 has got a four default libraries for documents, music, pictures, videos. However, you can customize and create your own libraries based on your needs. You can select and download gadgets such as slideshow, calendar or weather update to add to your desktop. The live updates of some gadgets like weather, stock, feed headlines are quite convenient in today's environment. As I have already told you, AeroPeak provides a preview of the windows when you place your mouse pointer over the program icon. This tells you at a glance whether the item on the taskbar is the one you wish to view. When you have a multiple items open on the same software such as the resume, cover letter or any other things or you want both items to be shown in AeroPeak preview, that is possible. The program icon is slightly different when multiple items of the same type are open. Coming to the start menu, start menu access on this with just a click on the start button, list the programs, folders, utility applications, everything that is available on your computer. Start menu is divided into panes with similar items grouped on a pane. The left pane displays a list of programs that you commonly access on the computer. This gets you going quickly if you need one of these applications. If you use Microsoft Word consistently, it will appear on the list. Programs that you don't use as frequently as, I mean, as it is needed, not needed very frequently. That is accessed when you point all programs only on the left pane. The right pane accesses your system folders such as documents, pictures and music. You open and adjust your system settings from this pane using the control panel. You also log off, shut down and get help using the right pane of the start menu. Below the left pane, the search box enables you to type the keywords to complete the searches for the files and folders on your computer. Searching is covered at a later slide in the presentation. In addition to the features, Windows 7 automatically includes on the taskbar, you can add toolbars to increase your productivity. The address toolbar appears on the taskbar in this example given. To add toolbars to the taskbar, just right click in an open area of the taskbar Point to the toolbar. Select the toolbar which you want to add. A check appears next to the toolbar that is already active on your taskbar. The address toolbar is very useful in accessing internet web pages quickly by typing the URL or the web address on the toolbar. The links toolbar is a way to navigate to the locations that you have set on your browser as favorites. Another facility is pinning. Software applications are pinned to the taskbar to make them accessible with just a single click, even when they are not currently running. This saves your time since you will not have the you will not have to click the start menu, open the programs, all programs, and then select an application every time. So when applications are open on the desktop, right click on the program icon on the taskbar to open the jump list. The jump list contains the common actions or resources for the application. Click pin this program to the taskbar. If the application is not running, right click the program name on the start menu, click the pin to the taskbar. Pin the applications are removed from the taskbar by just right clicking on the icon and selecting the unpin option. A related concept is pinning items to the start menu. Items you select to pin appear at the top of the left pane of the start menu. If you want to quickly access your Microsoft Word, pin it to the start menu. Save yourself from having located, having it located by clicking. All programs scrolling to the Microsoft Office folders and then looking for Word. 
Pinning items to your taskbar or start menu really makes the Windows interface your own. You're customizing it and it increases your productivity by creating an environment in which you quickly find the applications. Now, the notification area alerts you to the important information about the activities going behind the scenes on your computer. A red circle with an X on the notification icon indicates that a message is available. Click on the notification icon and a pop-up window app displays the information. The notification area provides the information on the detection of a new device on your computer or the availability of software updates or recommended the maintenance and security tasks. So the notification can be opened for more information by clicking on the open action center link. The pop-up window shown here is a result of the clicking action center icon on the taskbar. The action center is discussed later on this part. Just as you rearrange the items on your desk, you can customize your desktop to make it uniquely suited to your taste. The screensaver, a series of moving pictures that appears when your computer has been idle for a period of time along with the background and window color are selected from the personalization window. Right click on an empty portion of the desktop and select the personalized to open this window. The desktop background includes built-in categories or you may even select a personal picture from your folder on your computer. Many people enjoy placing family photos or a pet photo on the background of the desktop. Likewise, the screensaver which provides a privacy for your open files on the computer when you are away from your desk is changed with the built-in screen servers. The color of the border of the windows is another change that you can make, your, make to your own desktop. You can mix your own colors and change the intensity as you desire. Different themes are built on, downloaded from online theme libraries or created by you. These changes in desktop background, window color, sound, screensaver, all at one time and you can personalize it. All windows share some common components. These components makes it easier for you to use the applications. The title bar at the top of every open window provides the name of the file or folder as well as the application name. Located on the right side of the title bar, the control buttons enable you to minimize the window to the taskbar. So if you don't see it, maximize it to the feed, fill in the screen or close the window. When you have a window maximized, the middle control button becomes a restore button which returns the window to a smaller size. Windows may also be resized by pointing it to the border with the mouse and dragging the double-headed arrow out or in as you need. You may re resize the window by pointing and dragging the double-headed arrow at the corner of window. Sometimes you need to view two windows at the same time. Resizing helps you to achieve this result. In some cases, your document may exceed the size of your open window. When this happens, scroll bars appears on the right side of the window or along the bottom. Click the arrow to move up or down the document or both sides. You can also drag the rectangle on the scroll bar to quickly move around the pages. The discussion on the window components continues on the next slide. You may also move the windows, point to an open area on the title bar of the window and drag it to a new location as needed. You may also move windows, point to an open area on the title bar of the window, drag it to a new location as needed. You may wish to cycle through all open windows one at a time. Use the keyboard with keystrokes of Alt and Tab to move from window to window. Release the Alt key when you are viewing the window you want to display. Aeroflip 3D shown here displays the window in a rotating 3D stack. Hold the Windows logo key, press the Tab to cycle through the open windows. Release the Windows logo key when you arrive at the one you wish to view and it will appear on the top. You may also click on any open window in the stack to display it. We are continuing with the discussion of the Windows components. Window, yes, you see Windows 7 can arrange windows for you in three different configurations. Windows can be displayed in a cascading fashion, vertically stacked or side by side. To set this up, right click on an empty portion of the taskbar. Click on the configuration you want to use. Shown here is a cascading display of three open windows. Note that you can see each title bar. Another handy Windows tool is Snap. This feature automatically places a window on the side of the desktop. Click and drag the title bar of a window to the left or right side of the desktop until an outline of a window appears. Release the mouse button and the windows will snap into place. Sometimes you want to quickly minimize all of your open windows see the desktop. No matter how many open windows you have, click the show desktop button on the lower side, 
right corner of the desktop. Your programs and windows will still be available, but you have a clean desktop. This feature can ensure privacy because you can quickly return to the desktop view before you step away from your desk or someone comes to your office. If you want to see something on your desktop, such as your gadget clock or calendar, but not minimize the open windows, just point to the show desktop button. The desktop will be displayed until you move the mouse pointer away from the button. This slide shows three Word documents that are transparent while mouse pointer is over the show desktop button. This is an additional aerobic feature. Standard windows include file, folder and program windows. A special type of window is a dialog box which displays when an operation requires confirmation or an additional requirement. It's important to read the information in the box and not just click the close button or OK. Using a dialog box, you indicate how you want an operation to be completed. The print dialog box shows here is a very typical and contains a number of selections. Options button enables you to make a single choice from a group of options which you may only select one option but in a group. If you change your mind and prefer a different option, merely click the another option. A text box enables you to enter a specific information. In the dialog box shown here, you can respond to the page's request by typing the page numbers to print. A spin arrow provides a fast method for increasing or decreasing a setting. Click up the arrow to increase the setting and down arrow to just reduce it. Checkboxes display, then you can apply more than one option in the same time. A list box displays some of the available choices that can be selected. Command buttons enable you to accept or cancel the selections. The OK button initiates the choice you have made the dialog box while the cancel or close button ignores the option and closes the dialog box. So Windows contains accessory application software that enables you to accomplish a few basic tasks which includes notepad, wordpad, paint, snipping tool and calculator. We'll discuss this in the next few slides. So Notepad is a text editing application. Wordpad is more like a word processing program. It's a handy application if you do not have access to the Microsoft Word. Access Notepad or Wordpad from the start button, point to all programs and click accessories. A graphic accessory paint enables you to create and drawings and open the digital photographs or graphics. With the paint, you can open a photograph and make a notation on the top or do some whatever you want. Use paint to make modifications and save it when done. Protecting your computer from security threats like spyware, spyware, hacking is very important. Windows assists you by monitoring the security status, providing recommendations and offering the software updates as needed. Although there are very powerful tools included in Windows, you should make sure that your computer is protected with antivirus and purchase from a third party vendor. The Action Center monitors your system for maintenance and security setting, offers recommendations when necessary. Windows Defender identifies and removes spyware. User account control requests your permission before any changes are made on your computer settings. Windows Update provides you with the Windows software updates as they are released by Microsoft Windows. Windows Firewall protects you against unauthorized access known as hacking. Now, another important feature, parental control, limits the number of hours, types set games and the programs that can be done, run by different user accounts. Each of the features will be discussed in the following slides. When actions are recommended, they are listed in the order of severity. Red flags are serious and should be addressed. Scheduled updates of Windows are an example of red flag action. Yellow flags are suggestions and reminders. Maintenance suggestions such as creating a backup are usually presented in yellow flags. Buttons next to the recommendations direct you to the places to complete the procedures. Now, spyware is a software often downloaded while connected that collects information from your computer, transmits without your knowledge. So, keeping tracks of the website or changing, it is an uneasy feeling. So, Windows Defender is the anti-spyware application included with Windows to protect you from the spyware. Open the Windows Defender by clicking the Start button. Type the Windows Defender. Press Enter. You can set up in, to run in real time. If you run Windows Defender in real time, you receive notification whenever spyware attempts are made. Once you have established your computer system and applied operating system settings, settings you find useful you will have you will want to protect your computer against the changes now the user account control feature notifies you prior to making changes to your system 
the administrator of the system is the only person who can respond to the user account control messages. There are different levels of notification you can select from the action center. Now most software undergoes change, updates are made to improve the functions and provide security against the new threats. Now the Windows is also undergoing constant modifications and Windows, Microsoft strongly recommends that you set up your operating system, automatically download and install all the updates. Firewall software prevents your computer from self-replicating a virus or becoming disabled by another user. The firewall software of the Windows is installed when the operating system is installed. The firewall controls the flow of incoming and outgoing traffic and requests the permissions from the user when people, computer programs that are not allowed to communicate with their computer come calling. Think of firewall as a doorman to your computer. Access the settings of the firewall through the system and security portion of the control panel. Remember, turning off the firewall is not recommended action and leaves you vulnerable. User accounts within your computer can be set within the limits. You can use the parental controls to limit the hours and types of the game program. You can select the standard account to respond to the option in the user control window. Sometime you may need someone to look at your system to troubleshoot, not currently within your location. With Windows, you can set up the remote connection with someone you trust to determine trust is important thing, problem the solution. Note, this is action which gives a person access to your computer files as well as your computer in general. It is shown like how it is done. You open the Windows help and support, click more support option, click the Windows remote assistant link and invite someone you trust to help. Continue responding to the questions by either mail or EC connect option. A password that is used to access your system will be produced. The person accessing your computer will need this password to gain the access. Once the person connects to your system, you can chat with the Windows remote assistance window. In short, Windows enables you to access your system resources, software, work with the software, manage files and folders. Security issues and maintenance activities in addition are monitored and reported so that you can keep your computer in a good working order. So this is what in essence what is a powerful operating system which helps you to manage your computer and this system helps enables you to access your system resources, work with the software, manage your resources and in addition you have the security operating system. Okay. Understanding your operating system streamlines your workload and saves your time. The performance of computers for using this decrease the startup and shutdown time, go to sleep as well as resume faster, it uses very less memory, pop ups the search results faster, helps you to reconnect to your wireless network more quickly and recognize the USB services devices very fast. Now let us see some other operating system. We'll, start, we'll see the Apple Macintosh operating system, Apple Mac OS. It is a series of graphical user interface based operating system which runs on Macintosh computers. It is designed for a powerful PC microprocessor. Now the latest version of the OS is compatible with both Power PC and Intel processor through its version 10.5 called Leopard. Now Mac OS is the first commercially successful GUI and it has served as a model for Windows and other GUI products developed. Coming to the major, the major player that is Unix, Unix ran on the mainframe and mini computers. It was basically used for, or it is even now used for large servers on the web. It was a popular alternative to the Windows as a free download and several versions are available. Let us discuss the flavors like Linux. As you all know, the name Linux came from Linux kernel, which was originally written in 1991 by Linus Torvalds. The, the main supporting user space tools and libraries from Glue project. Linux can be installed on a wide variety of computer hardware ranging from mobile phones, tablets, video games, mainframes and supercomputers. The development of Linux is one of the most prominent example of free and open source software collaboration. Linux is basically Unix based operating system originally developed as an Intel compatible PC. Now it's available for most of the hardware platforms ranging from as I told you already PDAs to mainframes. 
it's called the modern operating system meaning that it has the features of virtual memory memory protection preemptive multitasking you name it it has it it is built and supported by a large international community of developers and users dedicated to free and open source software this community sees linux as an alternative to all the proprietary system like windows solaris and as a platform for alternatives to the proprietary applications as well as microsoft office internet explorer outlook etc as a result of this community there is a very large collections of free software available for linux they are there are geographical environments like gui is also developed office applications developer tools system utilities business application document publications clients server applications the list goes on available here the best part of this community is that all the code is open linux is free and open source this means that more than just costing nothing you are allowed to do whatever you want to do with the software that's why this red hat mandrake and suse are all allowed to sell their own distributions the only restriction to linux is that if you distribute linux you must grant all the privileges to the code that you had included providing the source this prevents the corporates from using the linux kernel as a basis for the proprietary operating system so linux ref specifically refers to the linux kernel however the kernel is useful without is not useful without the set of tools and applications to run on the kernel is a most commonly distributed with this tool set and a collection of this application is what you mean by distribution the most common are the red hat mandrake suse debian the distributions differ in three basic ways that is the process for installing the distribution the applications available and the process for installing and managing this application the linux looks and feels more like any other unix systems its development began as i all i have already mentioned it began in 1991 Linus Torvald, a Finnish student, just wrote a small self-contained kernel. Coming to the Linux operating system, it has primarily three components. It is the kernel, which is the core part of the Linux, responsible for all the major activities. Kernel provides the required abstractions to hide the lower-level hardware systems. Now, the system libraries, which are special functions or the programs used for application programs or system utilities. these libraries implement most of the functionalities of the operating system and the system utility programs are responsible to do specialized individual tasks and some of the important features of the operating system is that portability portability means it can work on different types of hardware as i have already mentioned open source freely available core source code is freely available and the community based development project it's a multi user system means multiple users can access system resources like memory ram applications at the same time it's a multi programming system multiple applications can run at the same time it follows a hierarchical file system and it provides a special interpreter program which is used to execute commands of the operating system and the most important part is that linux provides user security using authentication features like password protection control access encryption of data in short it can be said that os is a program that runs on a raw hardware and supports resource abstraction resource sharing abstracts and standardizes the inf- interface to the user across different types of hardware virtual machine hides the messy details which must be performed manages the resources and with this i conclude this module on operating system its functions and features thank you